A little bit. I'm an addict. My name is Sean. Hey, Sean. Um, I just made a joke with Abraham about I'm only going to read one thing out of the literature because, like, I came in a Narcotics Anonymous in 2009, and I have just over two years clean. So you guys can do the math. Like, I went back out, and, and you know, for a while. And uh, I remember when when I first came in. You know, our literature says like the mask must go, and like I came in here and I put on another mask. And I wanted to impress everyone in Narcotics Anonymous by being, like, what I thought was the model um, NA member, right? Like, I could quote literature. I could tell you all about traditions. Like, I used, you know, we used to beat people up with traditions back in the days. It was bad. And you know what? Like, I think about it now. I'm like, fuck. I'm going to have to make a few amends, like, in the rooms. Um, but, you know, like, it, that's the thing. Like, I had a mask while I was in here. And, like, I was working steps but not living them right and like there's there's a difference for me now like i can feel the difference there's a difference between just writing on the step and then like actually living the principles outside um because like i can come in here and share a bunch of really really good stuff and go back out you know go out into the world and do some really bad stuff you know and like for one one example i can give you is is like I remember when I had, this is way back, not this time, um, but when I first came into Narcotics Anonymous, I had 90 days clean, and I had a sponsor, right? And and I chose a sponsor because he had all the jewelry, he talked a really good game, and, like, I really just wanted all what he had, the material shit. And, um, you know, I got got 90 days, and he was like, dude, we can go to the massage parlor, you got 90 days clean. (laughs) Right? And, like, so I said, okay, my sponsor just told me it was okay, let's go. You know? And, like... But what that did was is it's just it, it opened up back that that can of unspiritual worms, you know what I mean? Like allowing it, it basically co-signed me to do a bunch of unspiritual shit while I was still in recovery. You know, like, you, you know, the, there was there was a point in time where like I was still selling pills and going into meetings and like I would share some real good shit and then like leave and go drop a bottle of pills off to some, you know what I mean? And like I lived that life and it was a painful life. Right. Um, you know, I have a friend that says like whenever he shares, he shares and he says, it's a painful thing to be in a 12 step program and not work a step. Right. And and, like, it's a painful thing to be in a fellowship of people who love you unconditionally and not want to hug somebody or, or not want to return that love. Um, cause I remember like I used to be angry and, um, you know, and like, I have like I you know I had I remember when I came back this last time like I had this 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 reputation of being full of shit because like I used to come I used to come to this 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 clubhouse right and get high in the bathroom and then come come into a meeting and like share some really good shit and like I would quote literature and I'd be high as hell and and, and I'd be sharing all kinds of stuff and and it was bad and like Abraham remembers that there was a time like in this room I picked up an 18 month medallion and I was so high, like, I couldn't stand up. I had to lean against this wall. And, like, I was telling people, oh, I, I just, uh, you know, I'm not feeling too well today. Like, come on, like, y'all knew. And, you know, what? <laughs> and, but, you know what, like, people allowed me my process. Like, no one took that away from me. No one came running up to me and was like, oh, my God, you're high, blah, 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 blah. People just came up to me, like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm just tired. Or, you know, it's cold medication or, you know, whatever. Um, and and they would hug me and they would love me and, and like that's why like when i hit this 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 last bottom right i'm not going to talk about using too much like i'll tell you i started at nine years old with alcohol and i ended at 36 with crack you know like so i had a long i have a long history of using you know um i'm from miami i got high in miami i got clean in miami i relapsed in miami and i got clean in miami again um i'm not from jersey <laughs> um, and that's not a knock on anyone who is like I just didn't have I didn't have the opportunity I didn't have the opportunity to to relocate you know what I mean like I didn't have that opportunity you know and and um, <laughs> it's true but you know like I didn't have the opportunity to um, to to basically 
to change my surroundings, right? Like, I can tell you guys today, like, yet, like, treatment's part of my story. Like, I went to treatment and, and, like, and I'll even say this, like, I work in treatment, but at the same time, like, <coughs> you don't need a PPO and you don't need a scholarship to get clean, right? Like, you can come into Narcotics Anonymous with only the desire to stop using and stop using. Like, there's so many people here that didn't have to go to treatment to get clean, and, like, I, I get people all the time, they, they call me, and they're like, man, can you, can you get me into treatment? I'm like, I'll meet you at a meeting. How about let's start with that and then go from there, right? Um, that's, you know, that's just, that's my opinion. That's not the opinion of any, you know what I mean? Like, that's just my thing. Um, but, like, yeah, you know, like, I, I'm kind of amped up about my recovery. I just picked up two years in, in November, you know, like I have 795 days clean, right? And like I can tell you that without using an app counter, uh, a clean time counter app. Um, like every morning when I wake up, I thank my higher power for the for the next day clean, um, right? So like I wake up, like I woke up this morning, I said thank you for for you know, 795, and um, and it's all because of the unconditional love that I received here, right? And like I was, you know, I was thinking like, what am I going to share about? And, like, something popped into my head, and, like, I'm reading this. It's a sentence, Abraham. Don't worry. I'm not reading a whole... I used to read, like, chapters and think that that was me speaking. Um, <laughs> I swear it's only a sentence. All right. You know, this is out of step 12, and, and it works how and why. You know, we greet each other with the recognition reserved for survivors of the same near, nearly fatal catastrophe. This is a shared experience. Like, when we come in here, right, like, we hug each other, you know, like... They just shake hands in other places, but like we hug each other here because like we know like we were fighting a, a losing battle out there, right? Like a near, like the literature says, like a nearly fatal catastrophe. Like we survived, you know. And um, I hear a lot of people, and once again, this is like my 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 opinion, my thing. But like I was taught that I surrender in the first step, and um, I hear I hear a lot of people come in. And they're like, I wake up every day and I'm fighting my disease. And I'm, I'm in a battle. And it's, dude, it's a tired fucking thing to fight every day. Right? Like, I come in, I wake up every day and I know that I suffer from the disease of addiction and I cannot have one. Um, and you know what? Like, there was a time when, when I thought I could have one. And, I, you know, I remember I had like 18 months clean. And I had about 18 months clean. And I had to, I got into a relationship. I got a raise at my job. I got a new car. So, like, I thought I didn't need to go to as many meetings. Um, so I pulled away from the meetings. And then, like, I pulled away from my sponsees. And I pulled away from my network. And I pulled away from my sponsor. And then I used the day after picking up two years clean. Um, and, like, that shit happens. Like, like, it happens. And, like, it's not okay to relapse. But it, it's, you know... It, it's, it's, it's a miracle to make it back. Like, congratulations. Um, and you're like, you know what? Like, if you're in here and, and, you know, like, you're clean today, like, I love you. Like, congratulations. Like, if you're in here and you're high, like, congratulations. You're my fucking hero. Because, like, it takes a lot of courage to come, in, come into a place and know that, you know, and have that dishonesty. But, like, just keep coming. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, just keep coming. You know, like, I came, like, I picked up medallions, key tags and medallions all the way up until um, 18 months high, you know? Um, and, like, it's, it's okay. Like, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up over it. Just, just keep coming. And, like, eventually something clicks, you know? Um, and I see a lot of people. I see a lot of people, you know, lately a lot of people have been dying. But I was thinking about it last night, and I was in a meeting, and... Uh, I mean, a ton of my friends raising their hands, celebrating this month, 10 years, two years, 18 months, blah. And I just became overfilled with joy. And like, like I got really amped about Narcotics Anonymous. Like I was sitting in the front of the room and I was looking towards the back of the room and I could see everyone raising their hand, like celebrating clean time, like people I know that relapsed. And, you know, a friend of mine that had been out for five years had one and a half days back, like a fucking miracle. Right, like I'm so amped about about recovery and, and Narcotics Anonymous, and like Narcotics Anonymous is my home. Um, you know, like anyone knows me, like 
I'm I'm in a family tree where we're very like hardcore NA and like you know that's that's my thing but like whatever works for you like it works for you and like stay clean right like I know for me like narcotics anonymous is all I need to stay clean on a daily basis um and like I said like I went to treatment right and like at that point in my at that point in my life like I needed something to put me in a box that you know it was either jail or treatment so I I took treatment instead of jail um you know but like I had a choice and um I needed that that time away from the world, especially because I knew I was moving right back to the same place I was living, right? And, um, you know, I, I remember when I, when I got out of treatment, I was in treatment for 47 days. And my therapist asked me, he's like, well, what are you going to do? And I'm like, bro, I've been waiting to get the fuck out of here. I, like, I want a basic text. I want to call my sponsor. I want to work steps, right? And, like, I got out, and that's when I met Josh. You know, and like we were Sponsy Brothers for a while, and we did, you know, we were hanging out every day, and then I needed to switch up my recovery a little bit, and then, you know, and, and that's the thing, like, everyone's program evolves, and it's not like, it's none of my fucking business to judge your program. Like, it, it, it really isn't, and like, sometimes I do it because I'm, I'm far from perfect, but like, I used to, like, really bad. Like I, I like I like I used to like I would judge somebody and just be like oh I can't believe they're doing that blah, blah, blah. now today it's just like yeah you know, I hug I hug everybody like you know even even if like someone's doing something that I don't agree with um, I still hug them you know what I mean like like it, like it says like you know we're all survivors you know like like the literature says we're all survivors and then the one thing I the one, the other thing in the literature that I love is like. I just, I just posted on Facebook the other day, like, yes, we are a vision of hope, right? Like, I, I, lo- I love the fact of seeing someone come in and, like, pick up a white key tag. Like, I saw someone last night speak at a midnight meeting, and um, I watched him come in. Like, I watched him pick up his white key tag, and he was just broken, didn't want to talk to anybody, crying his eyes out, um, just didn't know what to do. And, and, like, I saw him speaking with 18 months, you know what I mean? 18 months, like, sharing a message of hope. You know, and, like, that gives me hope. Like, newcomers give me hope, you know. Um, when I see people come in and they pick up their white key tag and, like, someone last night raised their hand it was their first NA meeting ever. Like, that's fucking amazing. Like, that's, like this is the greatest show on earth, and I couldn't ask for it. Like, I couldn't ask to be anywhere else. Um, but, yeah, like, I, you know, I don't want to go too much into my story, but, like, my story is one of, like, pain and misery and not wanting to be me. You know, like, like I said, I started using it nine years old and, and it just progressed from there. You know, um, did I hit bottoms? Like, yeah, I hit, I hit some bottoms and, and like, I love my family, but at the same time, they always bailed me out. So I never had consequences up until this last time, you know, like they couldn't protect me for myself this one last time. Um, and like, I raised hell, um, like it it was bad. It was bad, you know, and, and like, I'll tell you, like, my bottom, my bottom, and, and my friends joke with me about this, but, like, my bottom is, like, no joke, like, I was in a hotel in Hialeah smoking crack for seven days, and I got so paranoid, I lit the hotel room on fire trying to kill myself, right, and, like, yeah, like, at the same, that's crazy as fuck, but, like, god damn, where can, where else can I go in the world that I can, just, like, say that, and everybody's like, okay, get that like we get that like you know what i mean like 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 people in here like i could come up here and t- tell you that like i used to stick my eye up to the peephole for a long time you know <laughs> good two hours looking for shadows coming down the hallway you know what i mean and like put, putting potato chips in front of my door so i could hear somebody walking by <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what and like but that, that's the thing like these are the crazy fucking things i did but where else could i do that right like what am i gonna tell my judge that like your honor i'm sorry like i i was i was so busy being awake for seven days on crack cocaine that i was talking to shadows and i was so afraid of the shadows coming to get me that i lit the hotel room on fire and that's why i'm here no, you can't tell a judge that. And, like, that's why Narcotics Anonymous is my home, because I can come in here and I can tell you guys anything. 
Like, and then, like, I can tell you anything that's floating around in my head. I mean, sometimes some of you guys want to baker act me or something, but, you know, like, it, this is, the, that's why I have so much passion for, for Narcotics Anonymous, right? Like, I have a deep love for Narcotics Anonymous. Um, and, like, I get, if you know me, like, I'll get really offended if somebody starts bashing NA around me. I'll get, I'll get real defensive. Um, but, like, because it saved my life. You know, it saved my life. Like, like I said, yes, I went to treatment, but like I needed to be there at the moment and like treatment got me clean, but it, it's, it can't keep me clean. Like it didn't keep me clean. Maybe it's just me, like whatever, like all the stuff I learned in there didn't help me. <clears throat> but as soon as I got out, like I literally, as soon as I got out, the first thing I did was I went from the treatment center to a meeting. I didn't have my license. I didn't have, I didn't have my wallet. I had a broken pair of glasses and I showed up here for the nine o'clock because I knew my sponsor was going to be here and it was his home group, right? Like, that's what I did. And, like, that's why I believe that I'm still here because, like, they were like, oh, well, you need to go to halfway and, and you know, we really think you should do IOP for another six months. I'm like, no, bitch, I'm going back to NA, and I did that. Like, I came back to NA with a passion, and, and I work steps, right? Like, the one thing about me is, like, I don't base my recovery – on how many meetings I attend. I don't base my recovery on, on, on how many sponsees I have. I base my recovery on my step work. Like this is a 12 step program, I work steps. Um, and you know, like I've worked steps before and I know the change that they brought in my life. And um, I continue to work steps on a daily basis. You know, I, I'm, I'm moving really slow this time on my steps and I told my sponsor that. I was like, listen, I'm going a lot slower on my steps this time because I need to make sure that I am practicing every single principle that's behind the step in, in, in my life on a daily basis before I move on to the next step. Um, because, like, I want to live the narcotics, you know, way of life, you know. And, like, that's – I have – I chose my sponsor. And, like, the thing is, is I have nothing in common with my sponsor besides we love fishing. Um, you know, like, like my sponsor has 36 years clean with one white key tag. He shot dope in Vietnam. Dude, I'm a crackhead from Miami. You know what I mean? Like, like, and I have, I've, in, in six years, and on my six-year run, I picked up over 37 white key tags. I have them all hanging on my wall in my room. You know, like, I have, I have all the key tags going from white to black, and then 36 or 37 white key tags, and then going back to black again. Right, like November, I got to pick up that black key tag, you know, and like that was fucking awesome. Like it was amazing for me to like. I remember when it was like midnight, and my girlfriend called me, and she's like, "Congratulations, dude!" Like, you know what? Like I can tell you, like I cried, you know, like I cried because I remember the last time that I had two years clean. No joke, like I had two years clean, and something awful happened in my life, and I had withdrawn myself away from Narcotics Anonymous, so far away from Narcotics Anonymous that, that I was just on an island by myself. And something happened, and I was walking down the street in Fort Lauderdale, and, and those girls that hand out the shots that are on the, in the little test tubes, she like walked right by me with one, and I grabbed it, and I took it with two, a day after two years clean. You know, and like, didn't even think about it. Didn't even think about it. And like, that's how my disease can get me, you know? Like, my disease can corner me, and get me and get me into a position and i found that the further along i move in, in recovery and like the more clean time i get the more sneaky my disease gets like my disease will, will come at me in like all different types of ways you know um it's not it, like it's not about all these the like the triggers that they talk about in treatment um you know like i i don't get triggered by seeing a beer commercial but like getting in an argument with my mom, you know, like that, right? Like I, I can tell you guys like the other night, <clears throat> I, I ended up going out and I stayed out a little late. I went to the midnight meeting and I live with my mother and I'll get into that in a second. But like I got home and she made a crack comparing me to my father who was a raging alcoholic. And then she made a crack about, she was like, oh, you're probably drunk. And I got so offended that, like, I said some stuff I shouldn't have said, and I apologized to her in the morning. But, like, at that moment, if, if, like, if there had been, like, a nice crack rock sitting there, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Because, like, my disease caught me 
like out of, out of nowhere. It just caught me because I got so angry and like I use out of rage, right? And like that's that's how that's why I use like, and like when I use, I used to die. Like I don't use to get high anymore. You know, I found that in the, in the last six years that that I was using, like I don't. There's there was just nothing fun. Dude, like, there was nothing fun. Even that first night when I just had that shot. Like, I literally went into the bar and drank half a bottle of Patron and started puking everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, there, what, what is fun about that? Like, nothing was, there was nothing fun in, in, in my last run. Nothing. Nothing. Every time I got high, it was a suicide mission. You know, like, like I was a kamikaze user. And, um, but, like, back to the whole, like, when I got out of treatment, like, here's the thing. Like, I, I had nowhere else to go. Like, I had to move home. I had to move back home. And I moved back home to a house where my mom drinks, my sister drinks. Um, my sister takes prescriptions that, you know, that, that I used to use. And I live across the street from my dealer. And, like, I literally see him every day when I walk my dog. Like, I know I could walk across the street and get an eight ball from him if I really wanted to. And that's where, like, my recovery comes in, and, and um, I have to rely on that. And I know that, like, if I can't use no matter what, you know, and, and I know that, that it's just it's nothing but pain and misery for me. And, and I was talking to my sponsor yesterday, um, and, and he was... And I was, ta- I was telling him about the situation with my mom. He's like, did you, he's like, did you think about using it? I said, no, but if there had been something there, I, I don't know. And he's like, yeah, because you're not obsessing about it. Like, you're not, you're not constantly thinking about getting high anymore. Because um, I don't want to. Like, there, there's nothing. I, you know, I was, talking to, I was talking to my girlfriend about this. And, like, a lot of people in this room know my girlfriend. And, and you know, my recovery is the most important thing to me. Right? Like, nothing comes before my recovery. Not my mother, not my sister, not my dog, not my girlfriend, not my job. I, I would have, if I felt that my recovery was in danger, I would drop all of those things just to get to a meeting and make sure that I was okay. Um, right? Because, like, if I get high, none of that shit matters. None of that shit matters. I don't care. Like, I'll leave my dog locked in a bathroom for four days. You know what I mean? Like, I won't... It, It'll just turn into a whole shit show and like every I lose everything, right? Like when I when I use, like I don't know about you guys, but like when I use, like I lose everything. You know? Um, but like I've I've given up a lot of a lot of expensive <coughs> things in my recovery and I've lost a lot of things in my recovery, but like the most valuable thing I I not in my recovery, but in, in using and the but but the most valuable thing I've ever lost using was like my spirit. Right, like being spiritually broken was the worst feeling that I could ever have in my life. I remember when when I woke up, you know, in the hospital, and I, like, I was handcuffed to the bed. They had me Baker acted, and I, you know, I had the soft restraints on me, and um, like I woke up and I was like, was pulling on the restraints, and and uh, the cop was like telling me to calm down, and like I looked around, I saw my mom crying in the background, my sister, and my mom crying in the background, and like I was looking around, and like. I finally realized like where I was and that like I was restrained and I went back to sleep because like I knew that someone had finally saved me from myself. Like I don't know who or what, but like I finally got put into a situation where like I had no choice but to just give up. And I gave up and I went back to sleep and I literally slept for like a day and a half. Um and then I woke up and they told me all the charges. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Um <laughs> Yeah, Xanax a bitch. Um, but you know what? Like, that's the thing. Like, I, I, I just, I love Narcotics Anonymous. Like, I, I'm, I'm a satisfied customer, you know? Like, I, I've been to conventions out of the country. Like, I went to a convention in Barbados. Um, I was blessed and I was asked, asked to speak at a, at a convention in Barbados. You know, I was just asked to speak at, at a convention in, in uh, California. Um, but like these things are all blessings of recovery and like I'll, I'm going to talk real quick about like the gifts of recovery and then I'm you know like I'm, I'll be done I'll shut up I promise but like I have to tell you about the gifts right like if I get up here and I tell you all about using and all these things like all these things that I've been through and all that like it's, it's all bullshit if I don't tell you what I've gained since I've been here right like in 795 days like I've gained so much 
Um, you know, like I came in and, and I had a master's, I have a master's degree and, and in a career that, that was just making me miserable and I kept relapsing because I was miserable every day. And I, I went into a field that was completely opposite, what like just something completely different than what I was doing. And like within a year, you know, like I've been promoted three times. Um, you know, I currently have a job that like I was about to go back to school for. And the company that I work for decided like that they were going to promote me to that position without any training because I've ex- excelled for them so well in the past year. You know, I was with, I've been with this company for just over a year and I've had three promotions, six raises, you know, and like it's all because of the principles and like that, that Narcotics Anonymous has taught me. And that's just like the monetary bullshit, right? Like, yeah, I got a new car and blah, blah, blah. But like I got my mom back. You know what I mean? Like I got my nephew back. You know, I was just I was hanging out with my nephew the other day and like we were all at the dinner with my birthday. I turned thirty nine, which is crazy. But you know what? Like we I had my family back and like we all went out and we enjoyed life. You know, like we sat and we ate dinner and we bullshitted and we talked and we laughed and like the last time that we all hung out, like I was I was constantly in the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like being in the bathroom became a way of life to me. <laughs> Like, and, and, you know, there, there was a part in my using where I hated myself so much that um, I used to cover the mirrors in my bathroom. So when I went in to go take a shower, brush my teeth, I didn't have to look in the mirror to see myself because I was so I had so much hatred for myself. Um, and like today, I love myself. And, you know, that thing that, that we say when when you first get here, like, let us love you till you love you se- love yourself. Like, you guys love me until I could figure out how to love myself. And, like, today I get to love myself so I can love someone else. And, like, that's why, like, if you're new and I come into a meeting of Narcotics Anonymous and, like, I see you and you raise your hand and you pick a white key tag, like, I'm going to be the first one to fucking give you a hug. And, like, you're going to get my phone number and, yeah, I'm going to fucking call you. And, like, we're going to go do shit. And, you know, like, anyone that knows me knows, like, that's what that's what I'm about. And, like, and if you know me, like, you see me at a convention, I have Cuban coffee all the time. Uh-huh. Like, I, I literally do. I have a backpack filled with Cuban coffee at, at conventions. And, like, but, like, that's my shit. Like, I'm not big into hanging out with the whole big crowd or whatever. Like, I'm, I'm very, like, you'll see me for a second and then I'm gone. But, like, the thing is, is, like, I'll get the love because, like, you got to spread your love around in Narcotics Anonymous. You got to stay connected, right? Like, me and my friend, we call it the juice. Like, you got to stay connected to the juice. Like, you know, and, like, that's that higher power. That's that program. And, like, I can tell you, like, I'm not a big God person, but, like, you guys are my God. Like, you guys are my higher power that keep me clean on a daily basis. Like, that's – I get to talk to an addict on a daily basis, and, like, that's what keeps me clean is the unconditional love that I received here when I first got here. Um, And, like, if no one's told you that they love you today, like, I do. Thank you for letting me share. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.